afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast. With me, your host, Imperial Dane, off here to a one there versus one on Simwaski Winter. We shall be watching in the southern half. Curse here, fighting for Germany, for the Reich, for Deutschland. Taking on here the role of the Second Panzer Division going up here against once over fighting for the United States of America fighting with a rifle company rolling out here with the first infantry division holding up a vital crossroads as the second panzer division tries to break through and on to the Meuse. Meuse? Um, I don't know the name of that river, at least how to pronounce it. That rifle company, and by the way, he had all the other sort of uh, more unique commanders available, including Recon and Mechanized, so a little fun fact there. For Cruz, we are looking at breakthrough, Luftwaffe, and fortification. So, a bit of overlap in the abilities right here with MGs and heavy fortifications. Beyond that, no, nothing beyond that. We got the truck coming across the ice. You know, Fritz, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be driving across the ice since this really, really, really big truck. You're such a scaredy cat. Interesting enough, no, neither player seems to be making a direct rush or beeline for the field, though. We do see the Sturm Pioneers make a move here. Looks like he will be occupying the northern field point, so both players are actually going for the field point farthest away from them. Interesting, interesting. But back here to once over. Three riflemen, of course, using elite riflemen training here to get up one unit already. Calling in the veterans of Sicily and Italy. Probably wishing they were back there since there's noticeably warmer and noticeably more Italians, which are easier targets. We're holding up here and here. Truck moving up the false gunners as well. And well, the Germans in Italy generally were less well equipped and well supplied, as Italy was generally considered a secondary front, but that was also actually done by the Allies, so. Well, there you go, the Schumpan is rapidly pushed away again. This building is very nasty here for the southern field point. It's easy to arrest if you're not careful here. They certainly might want to preoccupy that building first, but too late for that now. Chuck him in about. Not sure what he's thinking with that. Rafa here called out in the open with the full screen behind him. car might actually stand a chance. Fire frei, Leute, fire frei. Just to see the American. Except for. Fritz there, who's a bit too much out in the open. Taking up position here, rather than forced to fall back into the church. And there you go, Fritz is now in trouble. You've got the rifle moving up there. Second veteran rifle calling, and that's very close to it too. Two. Not bad, not bad. These rifle want to consider falling back. The Fritz was actually able to do a bit of nice damage there. So two veterans called in and two less veteran units and mix there. The capture point is being overrun. Point there being secured. Rifle moving out. I'm being only here battle group headquarters, pretty standard stuff, ensures healing for the men. Holds them up for infantry guns. That's a nice bit of light artillery. Noting uh, three Falskner squads and one Sturm Pioneer unit. Actually, scratch that as four Falskner Maybe a bit more than I'd recommend, but there you go. Rifle holding up nicely here, although they are quickly being bleed out. The Sturm Pioneers in particular are causing a bit of a problem here with the broadside of the building, allowing most of them to fire away, except the one who died in the back. These are troops here coming to fire from the Falskner squad quickly up. Men going down there quick with the M1 carbines, a reasonably popular weapon. Actually throughout the war, and apparently you'd actually saw a slight upgrade in the later stage of the war, becoming the M2, which actually could fire fully automatic, also had a larger magazine than 30 rounds, being a sort of, I suppose, slightly assault rifleish thing. Little fun fact though, it saw little action in World War II, and what action there was was largely in the Pacific, so small detail there. But apparently again a very popular weapon. There was also a modification for it, it's a sniper rifle, sort of like the German Vampire equipment, that is, infrared scope, or, oh. well, projector in the scope there. Little another fun fact there. 
Troops are reinforcing, ambulance on the way, to heal and reinforce troops. Though I imagine he'll keep it next to his base and just heal it there. Of course, I mean, he could, in essence, switch out the crew here with the rear and you'd have the medic standing out and then have the ambulance up the front line. Some players like to do that. It is certainly a clever one. There we go, then you 24 here. Charlie's gone for Luftwaffe, he's gone for fortification. Question is merely, what has Cruz gone for? Punt captured there, going for the few points there as well. So Cruz making a quick beeline there for the few points as most of his forces here. Mr. Once over, that is, force back to the base. Good chance there to sort of grab some attention and speed. And what is this? He's actually supervising it. He might have a plan for something. Not bad, not bad. And of course, I mean, it basically increases the build speed. And Christ, everybody's looking a bit bored there. Do we have to stand around here? Yes. It's rude to the flag not to. But there's no flag. Shut up. There you go. Healing up most of the forces. It could either he's going for the suit light tank, in which case he needs a bit more fuel. We could be using it for the gun. By the way, he's going to have to wait a minute before that happens. But still, good, good. I mean, it's very rare you actually see the supervisor ability used by any player. But it's not because it's per se a bad idea. You know, because most players just tend to like to use the captain at the front line. But again, it can be used to speed up production of things, you know, getting them quick out on the field. So good job there. Always nice to see people make use of abilities like that, and that certainly also tends to be an indicator of a good player that they do make usage of such things. Meanwhile, spread out oh, move here for the south. Cruz there at the moment, sort of spreading out though. He's quickly using MD34 to sort of shore up some of the percentage so he can sort of allow himself to be a bit more spread out though. Of course, a good flank it could very much jeopardize this. Well, if I go here from the rear echelon units. There we go, he could go for the steward, he could go for the pack house, the question is very much what will he go for, both are good options at the moment. Both are good options. But it certainly looks like, oh he's actually going for the steward, and there we go, it is happening certainly at a higher rate. In fact it won't take that long, so good job there by one silver. Could be he was playing for a steward sort of rush strategy. Neat little move there. Cruz though continuing his dominance, grabbing most of the map. Of course now with the Stute on the way, and again, very rapid Stute in that sense. He might soon be encountering some serious issues. But there you go, the M5A1 Stute moving up. Very popular light tank with the Americans, but also except with the ally, other allies. I think even the Soviets liked it to a certain extent. Moving ahead here and opening up on those crowds. Falls away with machine gun and main gun fire. So a swift move there from a once over. Looks like the captain after that once more rapidly moved on. Also looks like oh, using Browning automatics. So looks like an interesting strategy here on the way from once over. Right for Stewart. Then add up some Browning automatics. Looks like he wants to really apply some serious anti-infantry pressure. Probably also in reaction to the fact he's seen you know MG34s, lots of false guns and the likes. He wants to sort of punish all this infantry. It looks like Cruz is sensibly now getting out of Ketan Alpha. Captain Spear heading the effort. Fulk is all being equipped with punch effects. There you go, so roughly equipped with the Browning Automatics as Stuart advances. Fires away, blows off some shrubbery, but uh, doesn't really amount to much in terms of actual killing stuff. Now go and send the armor people to find right there the captain, the good captain, and his posse quickly getting out the back door. Deciding that discretion is the better part of valor, in particular when there isn't that many enemies shooting at you. Careful there, Cruz, careful. The kid now for not in a good position, that gets spotted by the steward right now. That could be an easy kill and an easier kid for then for one's over. But there we go, getting into the building. I have to say, still an awkward way he took it. But with the student now, we do see that one so sort of strike back a bit more confidently. And we're seeing he's getting a pack out of artillery again, sort of response against the fact that Cruz is digging in a bit. Good, good. Schwerer Panzer at quarters on the way here. To support things around here. At the same time, in the buildings will obscure a lot of it. So it's going to be a bit tricky. I mean, it might deny him building usage to a certain extent of this, but 
I don't know. You might want to place around a few point or something like that. There goes to a quick close engagement in the focus here. Strong engagement there. Using their rapidly sort of push away harassers and otherwise isolated infantry units without any serious anti-tank defenses. Good user there, the Stuart. MD-34 in a lot of trouble, riflemen and such firing away there from cell buildings with the Brownings. And now you got the pack out here moving up as well to support the front line. No grenades up so far for one, so we could consider that, but over to Cruz. Full fault is one to two on Pioneer units, several MGs and Mind going up here, not bad, not bad. And he's going to fortification. He could consider losing the Volkswagen's actually lay down some S mines for some of a greater field dispersal. And of course it's blocking things further than infantry. Advance up here coming in a from the Schwerer Panzer headquarters. We're actually seeing the looks on the way. Negro can reference up the steward forcing one so to pull that back. So far the Suez actually not managed to make a single kill. You got rockets flying out here from the church side. Sturm Pioneers losing to the rifleman with a Browning automatic rifle. Gaining veteran T3 and there you go, MG35 immediately opening up. Lewis. Light tank moving up. There you go, Foscus almost wiped out. Nice hit by the artillery. Making into the advances. Schwerer Panzer quarters almost down to half health. But looks off Clang's Panzer on the way. Right, we need to get away as well. Captain might want to try and shoot off a rocket or two, though then again he might also want to consider getting the hell out of it. But no! Oh! Shit! There you go. The entire captain and friends crew wiped out to an attack here, though. We do see a bit of shell shocking going on there, doing a nice bit of damage also stunning it. He could try and get off the rifle and attack grenade, but at the same time the rifle are very much exposed out in the open here to the two Falcon squads. And there you go. It looks at the same time the effect wore off and it wiped out the remaining rifle from there. A bit of a bold maneuver by once over, but in the end I think he cost him a bit too much there. So I need some grim infantry laws. We also seeing a lieutenant out, so he's taking a bit back. Moving up Ravni again. Not sure why there's a low on health. So low on health, what are you thinking once over? I do not. Oh, and another new loss and a Browning automatic handed over possibly to the enemy. That was definitely an odd choice right there, but once over. I certainly do not quite understand why. I suppose he might want a, a peek around or something, or maybe it was a misclick. You know, now I can't really offer much thought. Looks like he might be trying to bombard the Schwerer Panzer force, bring it further down. Well, he's trying to blow up the ice. Apparently, having an outstanding issue with ice. There he goes, Stuart making a good hit against MG34. Lieutenant moving in as well. You could consider upgrading him with a Browning automatic sort of further increase the firepower of the Lieutenant. Looks like that's not the case. Can you get it? There we go, MG34 crew dead. But at the same time, the Falcons secure themselves a Browning automatic, thus have something that resembles a light machine gun for the unit. As the Falcons gun is in the actual war, we're actually known for having quite a few automatic weapons. In fact, they're sort of supposed to resemble modern infantry with a large amount of assault rifles, usually in a platoon there'd be two squads with assault rifles, then one squad with light machine guns, sort of two of them more akin to something like a Panzer Grenadier unit. They're sort of all to be more regularly equipped platoons though, but generally they'd be like two platoons of assault formation form there again with the two assault rifle squads, and then there'd be sort of more of a defensive shooting platoon in a company. So a little fun fact there about the Fox Grenadiers, certainly the current one we're seeing in the game certainly do not reflect the historical counterparts very much to be honest. Out of there, they're firing in. Captain forced away. Moving north there. And Betsy 2 for the MG34. Ooh, close to losing the back in the there. Careful, of course, careful. 
There you go, Bias. Oh, he's actually upgraded so much weapon with a flamethrower. Not bad, not bad. Crystal pushing onwards. A Kenma for covering things up. Looks like he lost it, in fact, just as it made its way out the back door. Still doing what he can here. But it's taking quite a bit of fire here from Crystal's positions down on the southern island. And ultimately, they'll manage to push him away from here completely in the eastern hand side once more, giving Cruz a large map down. Looks moving forward, moving forwards. Once more, shell shocked here. Can he get it? Can he get it? Oh, pulled back here. Clearly not confident about that. Pack out, needs to get away. More shots there on the steward. Both flight tanks almost wrecked, but there you go. Looks makes it away. Can the steward also as well? Focus moving forward, Captain moving in. Once over in a bit of a perilous and hazardous situation in the current situation. Cruises, Luke's and MG to the same extent pushed him bang. And the Focus, I suppose, have also done a bit. MP2, the ones with the browning automatic. Studio seeing rapid repairs. MD-34 moving out as well. One he pinched there from the Krauts. He could consider getting some orbs of Dunn to apply further pressure to his opponent's infantry. That would be one way. Or basically save up for a Panther. A Sturm Tiger is also an option, but considering his current force composition, I think a Panther might be a bit wiser at the moment, though ultimately that is Cruz's decision. A few more there being lost. One so might want to consider sort of striking up elsewhere instead of just charging up the constantly. That is a bit to Cruz's advantage. There you go, Tinian you know, comes out as well. And overall, I mean, he should try and avoid, you know, play too much into his hands. Oh, nice grenade set on the right. Almost wiped out the entire unit. That was damn close there. A bit fortunate there for one, so he did not succeed, and I imagine quite the opposite for Cruz. There you go, progress mate, MD42 almost wiped out. Close shade there, looks the right once more, Storm Pony's going moving forwards. Got the better use of a cover from, from the church. And a nice attempt at flanking with the false grenadiers, though they are taking quite a bit of fire here from the steward, though, which is already heavily damaged again. Once over his light armor plans, do seem to encounter a bit of issues there. Luke's closing in on Vets on C2. Good, good. Punishing those silly Americans for not being German. Following up with a quick minefield or quick mine there again. I'm surprised there's no real, you know, S mines going on. In fact, there's nothing really going on from his commander otherwise, besides those two MU34s. Well, three actually, since one was handed over to his opponent. No bunkers, no flak emplacements, and no trenches. You might want to consider that. As a thought, anyways. And the steward wants more ready. Certainly seen quite a bit of patchwork being done on it. MD34 covering here as well. Certainly going to make it difficult for one to strike out easily. Though, of course, a quick steward here could actually overwhelm the MD34 and hand it over to one's over. And there's so far no interest in that here. It would seem from one's over. And we're seeing Cruz is actually getting a Storm Tiger. Adding some serious firepower. We're also seeing here that he's gone into the more cautious movement here for the looks. Hiding in the cemetery. Let's go. Allowing it to creep around. A lot harder to detect. But there you go. It reveals itself. Like a stealthy fiend at the same time, Stuart was striking it versus the MD34. Should be able to clear that out. In particular, the T2 wave fires faster and is more accurate. And what is this? Sherman E8 has arrived here for once over. Rifle ends up taking quite a bit of fire from several angles here. Stuart very close to the T2. Oh, it looks, I mean. And there you go. Stuart got the MD34. So another heavy weapons lost there. Two. The Americans, question is though, will one server secure that one as well? Sherman easy moving. He could lose another MD42. That would be dreadful right there for 
Cruz. Two cents a bit too. Oh, there we go. A bit of luck for once. Sturm Tiger though, almost ready. A weapon meant to strike down fortifications and otherwise fortified points. It was first time actually used during the Battle of a Warsaw versus the Polish, uh, well, resistance or home army. Nineteen forty-four. That is. <coughs> Looks like passing away. Got some good hits in the rifleman. Veteran T2. Striking out a cautious movement. Again, they're finding ways of making it harder to sort of hide. And so should be caught over the Sherman ramp. We see Ken Weapons moving up. Several of them, in fact. And protect as well. Do you see here that Watson wisely pulls back his Sherman EC8. Captain holding our spot as well. Veteran T2. Almost dead, though. Is dying out as they advance. Sherman needs to get away. Get away. In fact, over to once over again. And there we go. He's managed to make away now with two MG34s here from Cruz's weapon stores. Not a good situation there. We've got the pack houses joining in as well here. Building taking a lot of fire. The Ken Mavs got too far at the same time. So we need to be careful. Two Ken Mavs in the front. And the Sturm Tiger. Oh, good lord. No survivors there. <laughs> Just some gurgling screams. That was, well, terrible. Just a huge hole in the ice. No survivors. Well, no leftovers either. Nothing to bury whatsoever. Suit here repairing. <coughs> the crew's doing quite well. I'm wishing an anti tanker now on the way. Good Tango. choice there. Both the canvas here. A bit too close, maybe a bit too close. Make it easier here for, maybe for the right. target for the pack Howard, sir. Was a bit more on the back foot again with the introduction of the Sherman. But clearly not out of the fight either. We got the Luxor still doing well. Still close to Veteran T3 on top of things. Good, good. Force is sneaking down there. Action. And getting a major. So he's actually planning on taking up. Interesting, interesting. Not just relying on. EC8, he might get, say, a M8 or a M36. Either of those could be good charges, or the M36 certainly would help more against the Storm Tiger and its thick armor. Well, we've been stopped by the MD34, Veteran Z2, and the Fultzman is doing their work best as well. There you go, Robin holding up as well. Fultzman is an MD34 covering up the left of the so we do have this field right there too. Lock them down if they're not careful. Steel hand grenade launched yet, but failing to make an impression upon the rifleman. Get perhaps getting stuck on the roof. Tanks tanking from several points. That bit of a pinch. We could see the fox is getting wiped out. Very close, very close. Cruz needs to get some. Oh, never mind. Wiped out, caught. 11 kills here, and there goes Jim Tiki moving forward. Sherman pulling back. A heavily damaged caught on both the Ken Mayor White phosphorus strike hammering down the church and the nearby troops, leaving them in a very poor condition. And there you go, only one man makes it out right before the Sturm Tiger evaporates the building. And the Fulkers were lost, the White Phosphorus combined with the rifle shots. They'll wipe them out, They're barely a slave of health. The White Phosphorus can't kill, but it can make them extremely easy to the kill. Point is being overrun. That was very nasty right there. Cruz may be a bit overburdened here, so many things happening. Either way, dead. And that was a veteran to four Fulkers caught there. Safety going to be a casualty that will aid Wineso and his fighting. It looks like someone died there. By the looks of it, it was the flamethrower tank that burst open. Since it's not here. And this steward is very close to Veteran T3, in which case we caught in a new Sherman. You could actually consider switching up the crews to sort of gain the new Sherman, then a bit more Veteran T off the bit and sort of getting more out of it quicker. 
And there you go, veterans who fleet on the steward. Quite good drop there from once over with his light tank. It's a light his pants, and there you go, Orbital Darden out for Cruz. Some more veterans of Darden. Oh dear, he could lose. Looks here. He didn't turn off. Cautious movement, making it too slow there. And an easy target here for the M1 anti tank gun, wiping it out. That was quite unfortunate there for Cruz. But a nice easy kill then there for once over, which I'm sure he's not complaining about. As for the mid game analysis, current situation is we're actually seeing that Cruz is doing a bit more damage. The kills were actually surprisingly equal. So that's actually a bit interesting to note. But we are seeing that Cruz, you know, having sort of dominated a bit earlier those sort of beginning to get pushed back here the armor from one so is beginning to pressure more and the pack out to certainly also adding in his own casualties near the forward position I mean one so can quicker back get back into the fight as well though I'm a bit surprised he chooses this particular point I mean you maybe imagine here a bit closer to the actual front line that is merely my thoughts but trying to make good progress and get the fuel point here as well he can cut off most of the fuel from course and the second panzer division which would only help him. As for what one so would choice are, he might want to consider getting another rifle squad. He might also consider if he hasn't already gotten them fully upgraded, the branding automatics, you know, get them some extra for example. The lieutenant always, I would say, benefits from getting another weapon. Another option, of course, would be, you know, aiming for a second shot, but then, again, making a little trick here, getting the steward crowd, then exchange, and then maybe getting something closer to say veteran to two if he's lucky here with the steward crew in which case again he suddenly starts out with a much more veteran Sherman EC8 and again getting close to some of the good better bonuses which will certainly give one so a bit more punch there and of course Langham sort of again slowly better up this one so a little thought there for once over but actually keeping up some pressure also sending some funny I mean he wants to sort of draw out Cruz as much as possible, we want him to overextend, so again if you can sort of strike here and here, that could certainly force Cruz to do so, since most of this actually going on here, which again might force Cruz to basically sort of be holed up here, which would certainly give one to a more sort of dominant position across the map, so he's got a bit of a victory point advantage. For Cruz, infantry is sort of beginning to bleed out heavily, he's just lost two full Scandinavian units, he's lost several machine guns to his opponent as well, he's got a storm Tiger, but he just lost his looks as well, he would certainly Benefit strongly, I think, from getting a Panther right now would strike against opponent's armor, would also provide some effort versus infantry, and would certainly also allow to sort of maybe hold a slightly lighter territory due again to the fact it's a turret tank and thus a bit more flexible in several ways. So that would something be to consider. Or he could, you know, try and set up a pack 43 in the right position, maybe that way striking at his opponent, forcing away any armor. Then certainly he should consider fortifying some of this victory point, which is not really doing a lot to defend S mines. Flat emplacement, one machine gun bunker, either of those three I think would be a good choice, maybe a combination here to sort of make it harder, allowing him to sort of further focus here, only having to drop forces towards you if there's say a larger armored assault going up here, that I think would do Cruz quite well. I mean there are certainly a few options in that regard. He could also consider getting up this, begin chain munitions for fuel, and then say maybe aim for a King Tiger. Or for that matter, Aim for Stuka Safus, that would also be an option, but at the same time, I think a Panther really should be his main priority, in my opinion. Of course, that is merely my opinion, but back here to once over and back to the fight. Sherman ready to go. Few pawn there being taken away. Riving up north of the flamethrower as well. And the stream team moving in. Captain Jones is in a bit of trouble. And that was a terrible shot there by the Sturm Tiger. He was close there to becoming Captain Splat, but somehow managed to avoid that. And there goes Ken Meffer cleared out, stealing it away. Those desperately needs to be taken away for repairs. I mean, that is a thing that will fall apart if you look at it the wrong way. Looks like some runners here. Right past the MU-34. Fuck is almost wiped out. We got the suit here continuing to apply pressure left and right. In fact, he will clear up the storm pony is there. Inch enough no move towards him right away. Maybe he's a bit too accurate at the centre. Secondly, a second. Easy should soon be available. 
that he's... No, oh, never mind, he's actually got too much on the field. That's a bit of a surprise. There we go. Very nice strike there from the Ken Rafa. Got some bonus damage in, I believe, as well. And Vets 24 out of that. There we go. Looks like Tank support is here. Sherman getting ready. the Sherman out. Oh, yeah, that's because he popped it out to repair. It's a, a little trick you can do. And there goes Jack to repairing the Ken Rafa. Good, good, good. So many players neglect that. So good to see once they were doing that. Still doing what it can there versus the infantry. And there we go. It's a bit of a naughty check, but it can also essentially allow you to get uh, our your pop cap limit. Of course, at the same time, pretty much means he can't reinforce units at all. So he can end up hurting his infantry quite a bit if he's not careful. Obviously, I'm making good moves towards the north. I'm moving in, might want to make a counter there to break back the Germans. Shum Tiki moving as well. And there you go, Falcons versus the Sherman veterans. He won, and no sign the Stewards. Sadly, again, he did not try maybe to switch crews. Again, I think that could have helped him. Certainly would have been interesting. See what the result would have been. Meanwhile, we are still on taking class up with heavy fire. And there you go, Incendiary. Oh, no, not Incendiary, but White Phosphorus Bash going down there on the Akedon Mirfa. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. And there you go, horrible burns. And faces melting. And they're going to be fed upon trouble. No sign of the steward again. There we go, they're getting a move on. Oh, the Sherman ready as well. A bit open here for an armored assault, actually. Could clear up that Sherman Pan's headquarters. And we're certainly coming. Oh, over on him. A trouble steward moving in. Sherman as well. Half the unit wiped out. That could be a tragic loss right there. Oh, down to one man. Zurück fang. Schnell. And there go, he's got a uh, yak hands of four. I, I'd not recommend that, but you know, it's Cruz's decision. Let's see if he can do something good with it. <coughs> not sit there on the steward. <coughs> My apologies there. But going there very aggressively in the south, the lieutenant and friends making good progress. And the lieutenant is no more. The Storm Tiger once more flattening him and his companions. And then quickly getting out to reload. As it fired some very, very big shots. Very big shots indeed. It actually took hours to reload during the war, in the actual war. That ought to say something about it. And also how much less impractical it actually was. But it was very much meant for basically knocking out entire buildings and the likes. As opposed to fortified bunkers, redoubts and such. But obviously the person ringing out can supporting, running into the caps and eventually they pushed away. And already though, the oh, looks like the pack has a good shot there, almost wiping out the Orbital Titan again. Fosbos leading the counter-attack down south. Sherman attacking them here. Getting the MG-34 maybe. Back to Kuss. He's bit to the Fleer Academy having a bit of trouble there. Oh, bit to the actually. Two Fosbos here with Panzer Strikes opening up down the Sherman. Still see Gold's moving up. The Kenmer for cleared out, that's going to be another Kenmer for right now for one show and there go flanking up on it. But no, he got the steward. There's more victory there for Cruz. That failed to actually penetrate, that's a bit surprising. Picking up there behind. Oh, nice turn there. But there goes shot penetrated. If only had the other Sherman nearby to sort of quickly do more damage. Looks like he's not going to sort of keep flanking instead. He ends up in front of it, needs to pull back there. A bit surprised there, a bit surprised. He must have been worried about something else pulling up to support the Yak Pans, otherwise I imagine he'd gone straight 
for the weak spot on that thing and knocked it out short and easy. Now we can have a, can have a wrecked. Most of the unit got wiped out as well in another huge watery splash across the battlefield. Also, fun fact, technically it was actually called the Panzer 4-70. Yuck Panzer was only used for the one with the regular gun, not the Panthers sort of gun there. So, little detail there about it. Little detail. And reloading it very close to the front. I mean, he can risk actually that once over gets off a good shot on it, clearing up the crew. It's something to keep in mind. There's a much higher chance of basically this one getting abandoned. Oh, really? There you go. Jack Panzer getting engaged again. Still no real attempt at flanking here, so the Jack Panzer does have a chance of knocking up. Oh, there we go. It got abandoned. It got abandoned. Nice right there with the artillery. Very much what could have happened. I don't think he's aware of it. Otherwise, right now, he would actually try and rush it and grab it for himself, which would be rather naughty. But there we go, though. Orbital Dan does the job. Now they need to get away. There you go, two MD-34s, doing the job. Still no sign of maybe considering getting a mechanized regiment headquarters. Troops are reinforcing, Sherman's repairing. Looks like he might be using take aim here to get a good firing range and basically take it out from afar. Good sharp thinking there from once over. Yeah, Panzer can't do much about that. In fact, the only thing that can is the Sturm Tiger, and that needs to be repaired and reloaded. Although we do now see Searing Artillery available here. He's been saying up munitions for that. Very nasty ability to use properly. And there we go, he's calling it in here. Will he react? And note here there's a sort of small circle indicating where it will hit. Any units that, by the way, they need to be visual, visual to the enemy. They're probably thanks to the Foxman's Veteran Farm in the church. So note here, if they don't move away or they keep staying in the same place, they will take more shots as basically more and more until it sort of gets fired at it. There we go, direct hit on the Howard, sir. There we go, now things are getting really nasty. He has moved the anti tank gun. And there you go, pack out to crushed. Units up there as well. Would seem murdered. Beyond all recognition. Assume we might get the MD34 here. Knocked out as well. Looks like he was able to save the anti tank gun. That was a bit of a close shave there. Nice ceiling artillery there. Doom Tiger pull back again. And the Fox was leading the way here. Now he can still do a nice counter attack. No real action here again. He's not really trying to sort of take charge up here away from the close. I do think one server should consider that. By the way, Sherman can move here for the Strap Hunter. Of course, you can try and flank around. The Yak Panzer will knock that out. And another White Phosphorus Barrage right here. And lighting everything up. Second Sherman attacking from the other side. Betty to in the Sherman. Lovely, lovely. They're exposing the rear here to the Ken Mephus and the Yak Panther and the flat emplacements. Do you know they do have a small chance of penetrating? And they shoot enough to actually sort of make that a reasonable threat. There we go. Okay, he's not pulling back the Sherman. He's actually hanging about here. And there we go. He lost to Sherman. I think in a bit of a silly manner. Is that could have been avoided? He was trying to get it. He might have been able to clear it up, but sadly, not quite having the luck here. Yak Panzer though might get away. He's not pursuing with the other Sherman either. A bit of a mischance that I would say for once over. Had he sort of pursued, I think he could have knocked it out and again got himself an easy kill and you know denied Chris further equipment. As a far the Yak Panzer for is not doing much. He's moving ahead the Storm Tiger. <coughs> Crossing the ice. 
Just being going. And there goes Shimchi going to fire from the Betchen is Vianto. Tank gun take aim. Paying off here. Down to half health. Ooh, he'll probably. Oh no, he's shooting at the young hands as well, I think. He shoots targets here. Intent on getting it, but rather maybe failing to get the Sturm Tiger instead. Probably should have switched target there, to be honest. But Peter Tendi Battle sort of cut things up. I believe also blockading the line of sight, showing the Shaman here to get away. No, only with a sliver of health. Okay, we have a good recruit, Captain Kuning, to find on here versus the Crouch, and a quick grenade here, Shilang Ganade on the Captain. But they do manage to escape in the nick of time, and... Looks like he actually was able to... Oh, the orbs are almost cleared out, and they dropped an MD-34 for the Rifeman. And they're making short work of those veteran folks, going to be Very short work there. I mean, they're veteran T3, so that MD-34 again, very strong, is only getting more bonuses. And they're actually clearing out a veteran T4 MD-34 team from the front. That should say something about the lethality of these rifles, in particular with the German weapon. Situation getting a bit tense here. Stand by, crew. Mega MD 34 opening up. A king here, flanked here by the captain. Another MD 34 rifle right rifle right as well. Three MD 34s here for Chris. Three MD 34s. And another easy hit down here for one's over. Spare Panzer Ford just got wiped out too. Contact up through the center here and another Sturm Tiger shot. Now the sheer presence of the Sturm Tiger actually caused him to sort of pull away, so I mean just the mere threat of it can force an opponent sort of quickly pull back. So it can win battles without even having to shoot. Which does say something about its power. And in the actual war, there was actually a problem here with the main gun of the hands of 470 here. It was actually too big and it was actually sort of constantly tipping down, which actually sort of had a risk of, well, causing some serious problems if it got sort of dirt stuck in the gun, which can actually cause it to blow up. The SU-100, in fact, suffered from the same issue as the young hands of 470, hands of 470. Caught by Blanky in front of the MD-34. That troop is hanging up to the side here. There we go. Veterans in five folks. Let's find maybe the crew does a kitten there for. Still no attempt without flanking the Arkhans of Still no attempt to securing territory. I really think one server should look into doing that. But back to one There we go. Sherman tanks themselves out here on the Arkhans of four, though. All apparently end up being in front rather than to the sides. Ooh, carefully on the thin ice. I mean, one good shot there from the Sherman could have knocked it out. Send it to the bottom of the river or lake. The Sherman right here needs to get away. Ooh, he might be making a mistake here. No, no. Chris realizes what's going on and quickly turns around. Very nice save, otherwise he could have lost at Yak Panda 4. Sherman having a bit of trouble there getting past it, which does allow the. No, so another chance of flanking the Panzer 470 lost. But fortunately, both Shermans are quite dinged up. Torch enforcing, moving out. Doom Teague once more ready to move out. And 
strike down some more allied strongholds. Head on assault here from him. Wants to spread out his men a bit more once he knows the storm is actually about there. A bit dangerous to keep that close. There he goes, storm is heading up. Can he get out in time? Can he get out in time? Will he realize what's going on? There we go. He sees it with the other rifle score, and there we go. That was a very close shape with death, and well, total dismemberment right there. And there you go, engine damage on the Yak Panther 4. If only had something to actually strike it with. Both tanks are too far away trying to take advantage of this. Little golden opportunity there, though he can't repair right here due to the fact that the storm pilots will likely end up being each killed then. Still no attempt at securing this. I'm very surprised that one so he's devoting no effort towards that. He's Cruz does seem awfully concerned here with only the same time. I mean, he's in return not making any move towards here anymore. Rather, seems like both players have gotten a bit too concerned with the center ignoring the sides in terms of strategic value. Another hit there. Unit wiped out. There seems to have not been the ones with the MP34. Which is only unfortunate for Cruz since these would definitely be his primary asset. Or his primary focus. And again, they, I mean, they have a Browning automatic, I believe, and an MD34 and Veteran I mean, they already got 37 kills. I mean, there's definitely a chance they have someone getting a Medal of Honor at this rate. Jack Pantavol getting attacked from cell sites. And now's the chance, now's the chance. There we go, he exposed the rear. He got too occupied here. Fosca is not good either. There we go. Getting attacked down to half health. Fosca is getting pelted with 50 caliber rounds. They're trying their best with the Panther Strike, but they simply can't shoot and load it enough. Quickly enough. And there we go. Yak Panther 4 down. In the end, it is truly not do quite as much. There we go. Veteran 3 in its last moments. Shams have already done noticeably more damage in terms of infantry killing and destroying. And certainly also more veterans and certainly more survivability. So there you go. Chris seems a bit upset by that. that. Oh, I suppose I can't blame him. Armor here. Down. Another infantry assault here stopped Take by the right. Sherman. And can never push out, he's good to give himself another MG34 right there. Mines going up, still no S mines from Cruz. I mean, he's really not making much out of his commander. And there you go, Jackson tank destroyer arriving here. Just trying to make things more unpleasant here for the Storm Tiger. Another unit utterly wiped out the Storm Tiger, quite good at that. But certainly has its limitations, in particular versus Rifle Company, which can just easily replace them. And there goes German flanking, in fact, it's out on the ice, out on the ice! Jackson shooting from the other side as well. Down to less than half health, one more vehicle, and that could definitely be a good night there, though again, there's nothing to stop it. Save it from Cruiser's side. And there you go. Storm T got kaput. The nice few shots on the Sherman from Cruz's Akettenberg and Pancha Shrek Fultz kind of is. Troops are reinforcing, building up, armor repaired and ready to move again. Both Shermans, by the way, now veteran T2. That certainly only makes things better. He's actually got a 50 cal of his own. That's a bit of a surprise there. Still on just a few folding up what made to the church there. It's always progressing now. We see Cruz have been a bit more tough to beginning to push for the other victory points, which in return, I mean, once over hasn't really done that. I mean, I think he's done that. He can maybe even finish this fight sooner. Germany again, most of the fighting core in the center. That's 
sorry about that. The music is constantly shifting around all of a sudden, which is actually making me a bit confused. Not sure why it's doing that. Sham there taking a nice hit from the Kenner. And again, the Bet 23 Rapping with an MD34 once we're doing it. But looks like one of the Germans actually went down there. Oh dear. Looks like a second Yak Panda 4. I don't think that's going to do it for Chris. But let's see. Still 42 kills. That's definitely not something to scoff at. And again, Rifle Company basically sort of ensures sort of minimize the casualties from the Sturm Tiger. Did it? The Sturm Tiger has been like gone now. No more storming about. Another zero to the straight down the support weapons. Nasty piece of work there from him. So note he's actually gotten this up. He could actually maybe attack. instead of Yak Yak Panzer IV, he'd actually you know, maybe gone for a King Tiger instead. Again, that's a bit too late now. Armor ready. I fear. I smell orders. Of course, we're still there with the Browning automatic. They pilfered off the corpse of some American. Close because they're getting wiped out. Close getting wiped out. Nice chance here for the Jackson to actually knock out the yeah, Panzer 470 quite easily. Though we do see the Kenwevs moving up here, maybe to help or just cover up any paths to flank. But here we get the choice for a white phosphorus barrage. There we go. Then goes terrain, and there goes Jack Panzer swing around. Sherman should be in, Sherman should be in flank. There you go, looks like he's calling in right here on the... F oh, the Ken Bearfuss and the MD-34. Yak Panzer 4 misses! Almost down, almost down! Tank support is here. Sherman ready. Oh, he allows it to get away here, allows it to get away! Cruz hastily backpedaling there. Now having pretty much pulled completely away from the front with whatever is left. He's actually getting fresh foot, kind of is. A bit of a surprise there. At this stage of the game. Rather than flanking in there, timing under intensive care there from the veteran to choose to apply his closing in a veteran fall and a higher lethality. And there we go, veteran to fall. That's ever going to make things much more hazardous for the weapon. In fact, they could get them on retreat. The there we go. Taught. We just lost a unit. We're losing a capture point. Okay, Yak Panzer von Thin Ice with uh, a sliver of health. Another white phosphorus barrage looks like. One server's quite fond of it. And now he can't actually shoot through it. And there you go, GG from Cruz. GG from Anzova. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. A battle lost for the Reich, a victory for the United States of America. Saying some brutish fighting we saw here from time to time. Some nice ability uses there early on from the captains of Reich in a steward. Nicely done. There by once over. There was certainly some interesting strategies you play there. Also, good use. I mean, overall, early game, you know, first rushing the suit, then quickly finding up with Browning automatics, getting a lot of them, then really pressuring his opponent. A part of me would have liked you know, to see further be as equipped, but then again, if he'd done that, he wouldn't be able to get that MD 34 on these riflemen and that. I mean, 47 kills. That's nothing to underestimate at all. They, they definitely did quite well and certainly punished Cruz quite. Harsh armor play wise, I mean, you know, once over maybe could have you know, tried a bit more boldly vocationally to a flank, but overall, I mean, he did pretty well.
I think, you know, occasionally he made a few mistakes. I certainly think, you know, had he been a bit more aggressive and certainly also pressured things around here a bit more, he probably could have had this one by the 40-minute mark. Though that might be me overestimating things a bit much. I mean, very well played by him. He practically made full use of the command except for Ryman Flares. But beyond that, good pressure, good attacking though again. A bit too lax around here, and certainly sometimes I think he could have tried to flank hard on that first Yak Panda 4. And I certainly think the move down here with that Sherman was a bit miscalculated and resulted in the loss of a Sherman needlessly. So that is that. For Cruz, I mean, he didn't actually make much use of his command. We saw MD 34, we saw some swing artillery. The first one there was great. But beyond that, I mean, I think he could use a more with the commander. No S mines, for example. No flank inflation, no bunkers, or trenches, I mean. And no, you know, back 43s. I mean. If he'd done a bit more of that, I think he'd done well. I certainly, I think the Yacht Panzer's fours, and though I always say that, I'll admit, you know, what a bit of a mistake. He probably could have done better with a Panther rather than that. And the Storm T was only great, but at the same time, you know, without something to really push forwards, he couldn't really exploit the gaps that he'd made. I mean, usually, again, you want to get a Panther first, then the Storm T. The Storm T basically knocks out any target, and you're rushing with the Panther and infantry, sort of exploit whatever gap was made so there was a few things that I think you know with the unit composition slightly different I think Chris could have done better but at the same time the way he held up in the village I mean again he was lucky that Watso didn't push out of here but again I mean he probably should have slightly s changed the sort of center of gravity for his forces again he should have been more focused around his run than straight in the village again that made it easier for one so to sort of attack him from flanks and the lacks though again sometimes he did just sort of punch in straight on to cruise which is certainly to cruise's advantage so i think that rather covers it for this match damage wise though a lot has been done and we do know there's actually kill advantage for one so which is like something but Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something from today's episode. If you did, one subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone, or you know, feel free to disable ad blog if you use that. If not, you can always donate via PayPal. At least support me that way. If not, you know, send in a replay and provide some feedback in the comments. If you do send in a replay, do provide a link to the leaderboards where I'll sort of make things a bit easier for me and do provide some details on, like for example who we are. I mean I do get a lot of replays where there's basically nothing being told. Anyways, this is Imperial Dane saying cheers and see you all tomorrow.